Hello and welcome to the demonstration of DynaVista CA application for system KTID5. My name is Jakob Schmeda and I work for Dyton Company, who is the sole distributor for this solution within the European region. Just a few words off the start about Dyton. We are a business consulting company dealing with Dassault Systems products. One of the products is Katia, and today I would like to guide you through one of the existing custom applications to Katia, namely DynaVista CAA. The presentation aims to familiarize you with the solution and to introduce key functionalities and key usage benefits to you. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Here we see the basic structure composition in modules that together make one of the DynaVista packages called the DAI layout design package. It consists of three modules, formability fillet, formability shaper and die face design. The software is scalable, so any combination of these modules is possible even though the full package is the most cost effective than the separate modules or their combinations. A few words about suitability of using individual modules. Now only briefly though. The entire superstructure is particularly suited for tool shops as a whole, but the formability fillet is actually suitable for any design development phases, not only tools. Wherever the user is confronted with complex rounding, for example. Typically uses are in the areas of product development, mold making, prototypes, or just pressing tools. The formability shaper and die face design are then typically used for the purpose of the tool room in comprehensive design of the die tools. In this video, let's take a closer look at the second of the modules from the die layout design package, which is the one typically used in tool shops called the formability shaper. So before showing a few common features from this particular module, let me say a few words in general about the workbench. So the formability shape of its function is used to transform the pressed sheet itself so that it is usable in a simpler way later on by the tool. For instance, say by means of pre-tensioning tools, uh, global deformation and so on. Based on the material and the technology used, it is necessary to take into consideration the different forms and deformation scenarios of the molding. DynaVista, though, is not a simulation tool. It serves for the geometry, it is a geometry tool for the necessary geometry changes. Here you can see some of the key functionalities of the module. So in particular, it is a formation of shapes with elimination of flexible behavior. As mentioned, the global deformations in the direction of formation, for example. An offset only on dedicated steep walls is a good feature. Another one is an uplift of surface areas, so-called bobeering. There is the possibility to reduct the radius and fill open areas like whole surfaces with a single click. And also a possibility of a replacement and fast overlay of poor quality geometry. So the first presented functionality from the formability shaper module is the springback feature which helps users to define the cushioning of specific surfaces of a sheet. By creating a new complex surface, which is rotated around the original one, around a bent curve, which is based on different specific parameters. Now the rotation itself is defined either by an angle or by distance parameter, or it could also be that the definition type is around the reference curve. This provides a high flexibility during variable transformation at different locations. Also, the resulting surface has all of the properties of the original area after the deformation itself. Here we can see a case study of one of the typical examples of pretensioning in a form of rotation of complex area along a predefined general 3D curve. Let's see this example now in Katia itself, DynaVista. So here we can see the input geometry, a surface. Now, the first thing we're going to do, 
we're already in the form of the shaper but the first thing we're going to do is to create a rotation base curve which will serve for the spring grip functionality itself so as you can see we're selecting and multi-selecting the fillet faces which will then be the inputs for a new wire we're going to create with this feature once we have this wire created we can see that the quality of it isn't perfect so for a brief moment we're going to switch to generative shape design and use a commonly used curve smooth to repair this wire going for the uh, curvature preview and confirming and this curve smooth feature will then be the input itself for our spring back for a better visualization using the graphic properties going back to the formability shape module and now focusing on the spring back selecting it the shape to deform is the sheet metal the surface the rotation base base curve is the one we just created and now we have to choose the deformation type as you can see there are three different types we're going for a gradation surface in which we're going to select again the fillet faces and choose which side from these fillets will be the one which is fixed and the one which we want to rotate with selected parameters once we have these fillet faces selected we can see the fixed side is the only other one that we desire so we're simply going for the other side button there now the only thing left is under the deformation type selecting the angle or the distance alternatively the reference curve in this particular example let's go for distance we can either choose points vertexes if you want or we can go also for the edges first one is a point by 4 millimeters this one is an edge you can choose for 2 millimeters maybe change it later and let's select the third one on the other side what we're going for here is the deformation on different sides on each of the uh, edges of the of the sheet metal itself so in the middle let's keep it under zero go for different sides on each of the edges you can see the resulting geometry on the wireframe right now on the preview and once we confirm it we can compare the original surface with our result this is not a long process and right here you can see the 4 millimeters rotation on one side and minus 4 on the other hand in the second having the middle completely the same as the original surface on that particular edge which was selected in the dialog window twist modify is another feature selected from this module in this case we are talking about a global deformation in a forming direction where particular emphasis is placed on easy and fast sheet metal bending characteristic associativity between original and deformed sheet metal or surfacing part and also a possibility of global deformation of the sheet metal or surface input by analytical results like bulk input the next step in this presentation is to zoom in on this particular feature in another of the practical examples so again we have an input sheet metal or a surface if you like there's the feature twist modify which we're going for we have three different options first let's see the pressing transformation for which you only need two inputs so there's a surface to the form which is the upper one and the target surface this basically only does a projection on the target surface what we're going for instead is the project transformation in this case for which we need a third input so we have to distinguish the target surface and the base surface 
you can see the mutual position of these two and the surface to the form is taking the consideration of base surface and going in a direction method surface normal in this case for the target one. Another direction method is simply a long direction which doesn't take into account the distance from base to target surface. There is a scale of 1 which simply is the ratio between these two surfaces. Once I reduce this ratio the new resulting surface from our surface to the form will be twice smaller. Once more you can see the result changing with the graphic properties for a comparison. An interesting feature is an offset which can be done by selecting steep walls. Something which is sometimes a lot of trouble in native TV5. In these particular examples there is high flexibility in the transformation in different locations and that is ensured by various deformation parameters. We can see three different examples on this slide. So there is a different direction in each of them. The first one is a normal to the steep surface wall, so normal from the input. The second one is a in a particular direction which you can choose as a user. And the third one is along the surface itself. So another different type of direction. The important thing to mention is that again the resulting surface after the formation itself has all of the properties of the original area of the steep wall. Another selected element from this module is a feature called overcrown, which represents the function of so-called general lifting, sometimes called bombeering. This concerns a definition of an area for an uplift and the direction of the deformation itself. It's a so-called definition of lifting geometry and there's an option of a spectral map of distances which you can see from the original geometry. Once more the resulting surface after deformation has again the specs and features of the original area we input. Let's now bring this feature closer to practice in Katia with DynaVista. Being active in the formability shape module, we're selecting the overcrown feature, first selecting the surface to the form. Now we can't forget the direction in which we want to uplift it. Selecting the boundary from which the uplift will take place. You can see peak point, peak curve and a region curve options for the uplift itself. We're going for the most complex one, the region curve. So we're selecting the lift element which will be the basic definition of the feature and we're going to uplift it by about 10 millimeters. What you can do is to select the contour curve as another specification which will be taken into consideration. And after computing the shape itself, DynaVista will form some of the extra features which we will hide in a second once we see the resulting surface of the bearing itself you can see the loose face there which we're simply going to hide with the erase temporary and we can see the overcrown now so we're selecting the uh, input geometry to be hidden seeing that it's a smooth face with no discrepancies and we can also visualize the spectrum map there are options for the level of detail, going for high, or you can set a range as well. We're having a whole range now and seeing the spectrum map for a better visualization of the result. There are a number of other useful features that are contained within the formability shaper module. For instance, the radius reduction, which serves users in situations where the radius touches the tool in the mold and therefore creates too much friction. Thanks to this feature the sheet will not be rubbed so much and no breaking friction will occur. 
Another big feature, for example, simple filling of holes with a mouse click. There won't be an example for this, but it's another useful feature to take in consideration. We will now look at the first one of these two in DynaVista again. Taking a look at the Redact Radius now, having the same model as we saw once before. So this feature is going to redact the radius of selected fillet faces, what we're doing right now as inputs. So when we have the inputs ready, we're going to see the reduction value, which is currently 5 millimeters, and the section creation depends on an option for which you're going. Right now is the reduction of arc, which is typically used. And you can see different examples of different reductions. Of course, there's a tolerance depending on the topology on which you're working with, with the fillet surfaces. You could also go instead for the radius of arc, which will give you a different output doesn't do much of the difference for the friction which is our main objective here so we're going for the reduction of arc instead and reduct it or reduce it by five millimeters the result itself is a new surface which we need to connect and join with the uh, input itself afterwards customer stories Let's now talk a little and go through a common summary of the benefits for both form mobility shaper and die phase design. Uh, the benefits from these two modules are mentioned together because they are overlapping a lot. And these are from a from perspective of several customers who were able to test these modules. The first point is talking about a drastic reduction of time using a number of functions for creating, editing and eventually validating the surfaces of the die tools. The second one talks about the uh, geometrical associative parametric design that means the specification. So we can edit all the work all the way. And the last one is about the robustness of solution in the creation of complex pressing tools. Of course, full mobility fillet can also be included in these ratings and key benefits and its use and deployment is well suited for areas other than the creation of pressing tools, like in the case of shaper or die-face design.